Michael Jackson's pre-trial hearings, reporters from around the world lay siege to the courtroom in Santa Maria, California, turning dignified legal proceedings into a full-blown media circus. The fallen celebrity is always the star of the freak show, but increasingly his lawyer is the ringmaster who shares top billing. The phenomenon of the celebrity lawyer has already brought us Robert Shapiro and Johnny Cochran, both synonymous with O.J. Simpson, and Mark Garagos, lawyer to Winona Ryder and Jackson himself. It's a tough job. In and out of court, the celebrity lawyer's strategies and style are picked over by expert commentators. And he has to conduct the entire case in the court of public opinion. We will land on you like a ton of bricks. In April, Jackson dumped the ultimate showman, Mark Garagos, and the media spotlight was turned on his new lawyer, Thomas Messero. Thomas Messero is no shrinking violet, but how will he blossom in the glare of publicity representing Michael Jackson will bring to him? Who is Thomas Messero, and will he be up to the job? to meet Thomas Messero, but before I do, here's a brief resume of his CV. He's been practicing uh, law in California for 30 years or so, and he has some experience of dealing with celebrities. He was just representing uh, a fairly well-known actor, and he's represented a newsreader. He even represented Mike Tyson on a, on a rape charge that never came to court. But representing Michael Jackson is going to uh, take him into the stratosphere as far as uh, notoriety and fame is concerned. <laughs> I have been watching prosecutors and defense lawyers for 10 years in courtrooms, and Tom Mesero is among the top. If I had to pick my top three, he yeah. is among the top three. Tom Mesero has, has to be careful because he really is under the mind, magnifying glass, and so is his client. This is the biggest case of his life. He knows it. This is what he's always wanted. He's low key, he's extremely prepared, polite to his adversary, he's a real fighter. Tom Mesero is ready to win, but what happens if he doesn't win and what happens to his career? Now he's given the, the stage to, to win a, a very big case. Um, and uh, I just hope uh, justice is the winner. In California, the singer Michael Jackson has been urged to turn himself in. It follows a raid on Jackson's Neverland Ranch, which took place after a boy claimed he'd been molested. In court, Thomas Messero has the task of defending Michael Jackson against charges of child molestation and conspiracy to commit extortion. Outside the courtroom, he must field speculation by the press about every move he and Jackson make and prevent previous allegations prejudicing Jackson's case. All this will be a difficult job for the most seasoned celebrity lawyer. So how will Messero fare? To find out, I'm meeting him at his office in Century City, L.A. Lincoln's Inn it ain't, but it is the haunt of many top L.A. lawyers. Are you, are you somebody who looks for cases that you, you want to be on, on, on one side or the other, or you just take the cases as they come along? I do a little of both. There are cases that uh, appeal to me for various reasons, um, because they represent issues that are of great concern to me and I think of great concern to the society I live in. There are also people who come to me with a problem and I agree to represent them to try and help them with their problem. No reason to take the case if there are going to be those kinds of problems, oh, because they weigh you down and then you end up out of the case anyway. And yeah. In one case, uh, I remember he was a, an impoverished young man who had, was a former gang member in uh, South Central Los Angeles and had had a number of of felony convictions already on his record. That's the kind of case that going in looks unwinnable. Tom walked him out the door of the courtroom at the end of the case. So Messero doesn't just work for the rich and famous, he also defends the poor and disadvantaged. And he's been doing pro bono work, that is for free, for over 10 years. I like justice and I've seen a lot of African American defendants in my opinion, devalued the moment they're charged. Um, not given the kind of a treatment that, 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 that white people often get, that celebrities will often get. Mm -hmm. And I don't like that, because we are all equal under the law. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to all have the same value under the law. Somebody has to step forward and do something about mm -hmm. it. The 
Thomas Messero announces himself as a man of principle, the ultimate oxymoron, a lawyer with a heart. I went to an area right on the edge of some of the worst ghettos in the city to see what this means in practice. Every other Sunday, Tom Massaro comes here to hand out free legal advice to, well, to whoever needs it. So I'm going to go in and see him in action. The clinic opens at 10 o'clock and goes for about two and a half hours, sometimes a little longer, but usually it's two and a half hours and it happens twice a month. Yeah. Now, your speciality is, is criminal law. Yes, criminal law. So do you, get, do you get sort of filtered towards you, the cases that involve crime? Yes, yes. Yeah. And we have some other criminal lawyers who come from time yeah. to time. So sometimes they've gotten bad legal advice. Yeah. And sometimes they've been taken advantage of by other lawyers. Right. Uh, and they need good direction. He gave us a card if we need him, yeah. and he gave us some good advice and gave us another lawyer as well. Yeah. All right. So you recommend somebody to go and yes. see? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Very nice. Very yeah. nice. Very pleasant. Very professional. Right. Well, nobody seemed phased by meeting Michael Jackson's All lawyer. Right. Like most liberal-minded defense lawyers, Messero believes the American justice system discriminates against poor blacks, especially when it comes to the death penalty. Black inmates are more likely than white inmates to be executed for murdering a white person. This is the place where all the junkies go, where time gets fast. Since the year 2000, he has taken death row cases in the Deep South for free, saving all his clients from execution. The evidence about how arbitrarily it's imposed and how um, wrong it can be is becoming more and more obvious in American society. We've released over 100 people now um, from life sentences or the death penalty mm. uh, because DNA exonerated them. The only reason to have a death penalty is because you want the state to legislate revenge, mm. and I don't think that's appropriate. We may have a wonderful system in many ways, but it also does things it should not do, and it still does. He's also a vocal opponent of the three strikes law. Once you've two serious crimes on your record, a third offence means you're sent to prison for life, even for the petty offence of, well, stealing a piece of pizza. He says crimes defined by the three strikes law are more likely to be committed by people in the poorer communities. There's sort of one law for the rich, another for the poor sort of attitude. A uh, poor man will go into a store and rob a tiny amount of money and yes. get years in prison. A well-educated, affluent, uh, rich person will steal many millions of dollars and wipe people out of their pensions yeah. and then do far less time. I can get very, very upset at the system for having gone after them. Yes. And I can often find reasons why I think the system went after them. They're usually poor. They're usually not considered to have great value in society. They're usually being prosecuted by people from another ethnic or social class. Mm -hmm. And uh, very often, because the police or the prosecution want to solve a crime and want to, to close it and put it to rest, they will jump the gun and go after people just on very thin evidence. Defending those cases gives me great satisfaction mm -hmm. to let the prosecution know how dare you place little value on this person because they don't have money or because they're from a part of town that's mm -hmm. considered poor or because they're from an ethnic or religious group that you don't like. How dare you do that? Mm -hmm. You have to understand that a lot of prosecutors and a lot of policemen are not mature.